My phone's been updated again. We'll find the last Luna fragment here, right? And then we have to say goodbye. Oh, I can feel the waterworks coming! Don't cry, Mama. He may go, but you'll always have me. Tonight, I weave for you the tale of a kingdom wreathed by sea and sand. The heroine of our story is a charming princess who seeks true love for herself. Rolling over both sea and desert, this kingdom thrives in trade. And its queen has issued a notice. 
My beautiful princess no longer smiles. Any man who returns her joy may have her. The men in the courtyard queue in place, waiting to claim the princess for themselves. The first hopeful begins to speak. But his words do not reach her. She does not smile. The men's words are hollow things. They tell the princess they see her only for her station. But that error is not theirs alone. Indeed, all who live in the kingdom are blind. They cannot see the princess for who she truly is. With her face a stone, the men surrender and return to their homes. No one understands me, she sighs. But then, a lone boy dressed as a sailor appears before her, one barely on the cusp of manhood. He makes no mark on her, for today she has seen more strange men than there are stars in the sky. The boy begins to spin a tale of wild adventure. He speaks of a djinn he met on a journey. He speaks of desert islands filled with wonders, of seas so vast their edges have never been found. The princess is enraptured by his tale. She stares at him from behind her veil, saying not a word. On the queen's signal, the boy is escorted away. His voice grows distant, and silence soon returns to the palace. As the princess ponders this development, another uninvited guest comes to see her.
are you? The dark of night falls over the palace as the princess rushes through its halls. The fantastical palace in which she lives is in truth a prison that has stolen her freedoms. The words she uses, the way she acts, even the order in which she eats her food. Every aspect of her life had been decided from the day of her birth. No one has ever seen the true me. None of the men, and not even that boy. Day after day, she plays the role of a demure princess. Unable to bear this curse, she eventually lost the will to smile. adorned with the most elegant and fanciful decorations. It is one of the few places she can find peace. At a signal from her lady-in-waiting, the princess changes her clothes. The moon once again emerges from behind the clouds. She stares at herself in the mirror, dressed now in the guise of a fortune teller. It is a persona she assumes only when the sun takes its leave from the sky. She orders her lady-in-waiting to keep watch, then slips from the palace without a sound.
she will be greeted by the bustle of a city bathed in danger and vice. And it is there that she will slip the pent-up frustrations of her carefully orchestrated life. back. Nice job. This past took place in the same world as last time. I had my suspicions about that Desert Kingdom princess. She was sending messages to her precious babe. You know you can just talk to each other. Goodness, there isn't much space up here. Are you scared, you?
eventually, no. Even though I'll be screwed if I miss a step. Was that an earthquake? So, how about that princess's room, huh? Gosh, I've always wanted to live a rich lady's lifestyle. Sometimes a room can be too big. That thing would take the whole day to clean. And if everything is expensive, you're out lots of cash if something breaks. Don't crush my dreams, Yuzuki! Sorry, couldn't help myself. I don't care for rooms. Mama's apron is the best place for me. That's... Damn it. I need to follow her. The floor is... Fall underground? Where's everyone else? <sighs> Guess I'll keep going.
Huh? No, it's just my phone. I wouldn't be answering the phone if I was dead. Oh, yeah. I guess not. Anywho, I'll guide you over the phone, okay? No need to worry. Thanks. I'm at the second Scarecrow now. Go ahead and repair the thing. You've got this! Every night, the princess slips out of the palace for her own amusement. She sits in a dim and dingy alleyway, one that lies forgotten by the people of the city. This small tent is the princess's second home. It is a place where she tells fortunes, one of her own creation. Yet her divinations often ring true, and rumors claim her words can change fate itself. She waves her hands over a crystal ball for her first couple of the night. Even as a child, the princess possessed a gift for fortunes. She sees the couple's fate in the crystal ball and prepares to speak it aloud. The light within the ball grows faint and vanishes. With an exaggerated inflection, she speaks. Your man is unfaithful. He spends his free nights prowling the city for new partners. Betrayed, the woman rushes away in tears. The princess's divinations often tear seemingly happy couples apart. Whenever this occurs, she feels her melancholy ease. When she assumes the guise of the fortune teller, none realize she is the princess. This only confirms her suspicion that no one sees her for who she truly is. Not a soul within the palace, nor a soul without. Another vision flickers to life in her crystal. 
she sees strangers peering into her world. The princess quickly recovers from the unexpected occurrence and informs the couple of the result. It is a dangerous game to toy with the heart of another. I'm not afraid. Interfering. I'll kill them all. But be it as fortune teller or princess, the woman knows salvation will never come for her. Alas, her life proceeds on a path that is set by another. As the princess sits deep in thought, a familiar boy passes before her tent. It is the sailor, the selfsame one who came to the palace spinning tales of adventure. Perhaps he sees the real me. She decides to test his motives. She forecasts his grim end with these words. Death awaits if you continue to see the princess. But then... bursts into loud, innocent laughter. She watches him as he vanishes into the thick of the crowd. I wonder if he will come to the palace tomorrow, she thinks to herself.
and as she slowly makes her way home, she finds her steps to be lighter than usual. That should do it. All done? Huh. Then let's keep moving! contact info anyway. simple maze. There's a bird statue here. Ooh, poke it! Poke it!
Did I just warp here? Uh, Hizuki? Your little dot thingy just poofed off the map! What are you talking about? Just keep going, kid. Whoa. These flowers are glowing. Something about this place feels so sad. Does this door not open? Well, that's weird. It should be the way forward. Oh, strange. Exception pretty bad. Oh, come on. Oh, you just right there, you. The call cut out. Now what do I do? Guess I'll take a break here. Don't mind if I do. It's really quiet without Mama and Babe. <sighs> Something's missing without them. <sighs> Isn't it about time you wake up? A quiet voice rouses me from a deep and dreamless sleep. As I fight my way to wakefulness, I find myself in a sleeping bag inside a tent. I'm in the campground my family used to visit. It's late. The sky is clear. The air brisk. I used to use my father's telescope to gaze at the beautiful jewels in the sky. Though I rarely said anything, I always found myself wanting to go on and on about the stars. Whenever I mentioned a star's name, Mom would compliment me, and my sister would make a face like she was annoyed I got it first. It made me feel like I was the center of the world. Just like the moon is the center of the night sky. It's now a memory I keep locked deep inside my heart. Later, much later, my family changed. As mom started racking up debt, dad became violent. Her usual calm expression was now twisted into a permanent grimace of anguish. The reality of that was terrifying, and I started spending as much time away from home as possible. As my family fell apart around me, I found myself bemoaning my misfortune. My days were a long dark tunnel with no end, 
and all I could do was keep walking forward. And though I prayed someone would offer a hand of salvation, I knew it would never come. Yuzuki! Wake up, Yuzuki! <sighs> Guess I fell asleep. Gosh, you're such a little sleepyhead. You were snoring like a babe. <laughs> <sighs> Mama? Babe, how did you get here? There's nowhere you can go where I won't find you. You know how hard it was to knock down all those walls to get here. Well then. Now that we're a trio again, let's get back to work. Look there! Is that a key? I wonder if it'll open the door in the back. Admit it, kid. You were lonely without us, right? I bet you two missed each other so much! Not, Not really. really. We're finally at the next Scarecrow. So this is it. The fourth and final Scarecrow. This, this is, is still, still the third, third one. Oh, dang it. I was so confident and now I just feel silly.
The light of the sun gently illuminates the princess as it awakens from slumber. Though she warned the sailor boy of his fate, continues to come see her. She knows he will be back again today. Day after day, he flashes a daring grin as he fabricates tales of adventure. He wants so badly to see her smile. And at some point, she finds herself taken with him. The boy appeared before her like a bird that rules over the free skies. Perhaps she can flee her kingdom prison with him, and only him. She arrives in the palace courtyard. The sailor boy greets her with a confident grin. She stares at him from behind her veil. She can feel him looking at her, not her riches, not her status her. Yet though she so desperately wants to believe his heart to be true, she cannot shake her doubts. After a moment of thought, she decides to test him. She walks toward him. In a faint voice no louder than a whisper, she graces him with a plea. Elated, he leaves the palace, thinking to have finally obtained the princess's heart for himself. But she knows the truth. When they next meet, it will be clear if he truly sees her or not. Alas, there is a demon whose sharp eyes see through the princess's intentions.
Who are you? princess and fortune teller stand together in her room. The princess has come up with a plan to test the sailor boy. Will he see the rich clothes of her lady-in-waiting and assume she is his prize? As fortune teller, she can only pray he makes the right decision. Concealing herself, she waits. At last, the sailor comes to the princess's room. As the scene unfolds, her heart sinks in her chest. Sailor does not recognize the lady in waiting in disguise and quickly spirits her away. The sailor boy is just another grain of sand in an uncaring desert. And short lived as it was, the princess curses herself for permitting her heart to feel joy.
What's with the whole switching places plan? It's so roundabout. I mean, you've had crushes before, right, you? Sometimes you just gotta get in their heads. Well, I guess so. Okay, so seriously, back to the crushes topic. Who's on your mind, you? What a load of bullplop. How dare you cheat on Mama? Oh my gosh, I need to know more! Uh, we are not having this conversation. This is really the last Scarecrow, I promise. Time to see what kind of ending awaits those two. Mmm... A lonely wind dances through the nighttime city. In fortune teller's garb, the princess follows the sailor boy and her lady in waiting, who is still disguised as herself. She orders her guards to kill the sailor. For what meaning has his life if he does not see her for who she truly is? She thinks back on the day they first met. He 
spun a magical tale of traveling the world. From the day of her birth, the princess has been bound to the stone that is her kingdom. But the boy came to speak with her countless times, eventually setting her heart aflame. She had so desperately wished to fly to freedom with him. But now her heart lays in ashes. She has been betrayed, undone. It has been a long time since she smelled the salt of the sea. The beach is unnaturally quiet, the sand darkened with blood. What awaits the princess is a truth she can scarcely believe. The sailor boy is protecting her disguised lady-in-waiting. The boy risks his life to protect a false princess, yet the true one sees it as a fruitless act. I'm not afraid. This is for all of our sins.
Don't miss! As the battle in the bay continues, dawn encroaches on the territory of night. When sun and moon meet in the sky, they point their blades at one another. who can make her smile. Don't stand in the way of our freedom! Why? I wanted you to look at me and only me, yet my wish never came true! Why? At the end of the battle, the sailor boy falls unconscious, steadfast, in his decision to stay with the princess to the bitter end. Though the princess finds her will to live fading, one last idea comes to her. She will set to sea with the boy, and they will slip the mortal coil as one. Sea glimmers in the morning light, a silent watcher as sailor and princess cross its waters. Here, the kingdom cannot reach them. Here, a girl is not bound to her royal status.
As the sailor awakens, his expression twists into one of hatred. No one had ever seen the princess for who she truly is. She has been destined to forever be a symbol. Yet before her stands a mere boy who only wanted the princess's smile for himself. We. We. Tangled in an ironic embrace, we sink into the sunless depths. I stare at her with pure hate as the moonlight washes over us. I smile then, for he is finally looking at me. And only me. Their brief meeting ultimately brought them here. My wish is granted at long last, and I take it with me. Into, into the, the depths, depths of, of the, the cold, cold, cold sea. Oh. And that takes care of that. I guess there's not a lot of time left, huh? When the four moons... No, when the four keys come together. Oh... Poor oh, Yuzuki. What should I do? Mama. Oh, whoopsies. Gotta get back in gear. I guess their wishes came true in the end, in a way. Still, can't say it ended well for them. Hmm. Okay then! You've done so well repairing everything! So this is the last Luna Fragment. You need to repair the moon now, so let's keep going!
Guess I'm heading this way. Say someone had to be sacrificed for you to complete your objective. If push came to shove, what would you do? The hell? <sighs> I don't know. I'll just think about it and make the best decision I can. Making wishes a reality will always come with a price. Are you sure you're prepared? The boy does nothing but study and work. Study and work. Study and work. The stress of his routine weighs on him. It is a burden he should not have to bear. The physician told him how much time his mother had left, as well as how they might save her. And so, he finally arrives at a great decision. One taken to preserve his tiny sliver of happiness. The boy walks through an endless night with no exit. He does not question where he is. His only aim is to follow the moon that now hangs in a darkened sky. to death. He knows this. It is the only memory he has left. And knowing the end is close, he attempts to reach out to everyone he comes across. Thank you. 
he receives only cruelty in return. Sensing he has no place to call his own in this life, his legs slowly grind to a halt. Once again, he begins to walk. The moon shimmers, illuminating the path. It is his guide, a lamp in the darkness, so he might save his mother who now hovers between life and death. boy wakes up on the couch. The room is dim, the curtains drawn. The only sound is the dull hum of a refrigerator. Bottles of drugs sit on the table before him. It is poison he purchased on shady websites, poison enough to kill him many times over. But it is also a release, for while it causes brain death, it will leave his heart intact for his mother. Yet his body is not eager to embrace this plan. And for a while, he had lost consciousness. Words of self-defense flutter in and out of his mind. But knowing that his mother has no time left, he manages to shove them aside. His rational mind suppresses his will to survive, and he brings the drugs to his mouth. He feels as though his final moments will last into eternity. But then his phone rings. He lacks the mindfulness to notice his palpitating heart. But somehow, he manages to trace a shaking finger across the screen. Thank you. 
The call that saved his life was from the hospital where his mother is admitted. It is as though time is frozen in the hospital room. The light filtering in through the window bathes his mother's gaunt features in an ethereal pallor. She had passed not long before, quickly and without warning. There is a thin smile on her face, as though free at last from her hell. attempts to muffle his sobs, trying not to give voice to the wail that threatens to consume him. He has lost his last remaining beam of moonlight, and now he can only hold tight to the shell of what used to be his mother. If only he was never here. If only... I gave up everything in my life. I didn't need or care about anything unless it helped Mom. But then... Damn it! Yusuki... Let's keep going. Once you repair the moon, I'm sure your past will... It's finally time for us to complete our objective.
Well, this is the last stop on our journey. This is the spot in the cage that's closest to the moon. And the spot closest to your world, Yuzuki. been through so much together, haven't we? Yeah. This close to the moon. Huh. Um, Yuzuki, to tell you the truth. Oh, never mind me. It's nothing. Come on, you. This way. You'll find the altar of the moon at the top of these stairs. Once you place the fragments on it, you should be able to fix the broken moon. You're such a good, diligent boy, Yuzuki. No matter what happens, I know you'll be fine. I'm... I'm sure of it. So... <sighs> you know, it's been fun traveling with you. Plus, you really helped me out. A lot, actually. Oh, Yasuki. Well, look at that. The kid has a heart after all. <sighs> this is your last big job. Now go get him, Tiger! All right, here goes nothing.
Suzuki. How do you want to change your past? I want this. So the time has finally arrived, Yusuki. Hina, it's time for your wish to come true. So, tell me, kiddo. How do you want to change your past? I want to live with my dad. Warm sunlight pools through the window. The apartment is old and filled with dust. Within it, a lone girl slumbers. Now awake, her gaze quietly scans the room. This is her home, a place so full of memories. Her father is not to be found in his usual spot. She faintly recalls venturing into a strange world in order to regain a normal life with him. Was it all a dream? Her murmur melts into the quiet of the room. There comes a sudden, kind voice. The girl heads to the entrance, eager to see if the speaker is who she thinks it is. Standing there is her father, dressed in a suit. He offers her a smile and says, Guess what, Pumpkin? I finally found a new job. He is happy. It is an emotion she's not seen on his face in years. She buries her face into his chest and sobs. He responds by saying her name over and over as he strokes her hair. In that moment, she thinks everything will finally be all right. The girl sheds tears in the warmth of her father's embrace. She then makes an earnest wish. A wish for this brief moment of happiness to last forever.
In a metropolitan high school, the windows have been flung wide to welcome the summer sun. The chatter of students eager to head home fills the halls. A girl emerges from a classroom. Her friend asks her for yet another once-in-a-lifetime favor. All right, says the girl, but you owe me two sodas now. Her teacher's confidence in her ability could not be more clear. It's because you're a good teacher, responds the girl, giving him a polite smile that reaches the eyes. With a quick invitation, she takes her friend shopping near the train station. She wants to reward herself for doing so well on her tests. The girl hurries home after stopping by the sweets shop near the station. She wants to celebrate her test results with her father over his favorite treat of cream puffs. I'm home, she calls after stepping through the door. Her father collapses before her eyes. There is a knife, blood. He is dead beyond all doubt. It is his second death, but this time it was done by her own brother's hand. Pain courses through her head, as though attempting to reject the tragedy before her. Amidst her pain, she hurls curses at her fate. You use the power of the sun to wish for a quiet life with your father. But no matter how many times you rewrite the past, Yuzuki Korizome always kills your father. Same as the time he staged your father's suicide.
But I know you haven't forgotten, Hina. Because you bear the same sin. Hatred and animosity royal in the girl's chest. She has come to question her estranged mother, the one who abandoned her in the divorce. She informs her mother that her father has committed suicide. She places the blame squarely on the insurmountable debt her mother left him with. But as she piles on questions and facts, her mother interrupts. She cares not that he is dead. She seems almost pleased. This is too much. Finally, finally, the girl snaps. She fills her mother's IV with poison, ending her life. This is the truth of it all. The whole reason for this journey was for you to understand that. Because now, it's time for your wish to come true.
I'll never forgive him. Never. Never. Yuzuki Kurizome. Hina Akagi. I knew it. You killed Mom. <laughs> like you're one to talk. You killed Dad. No matter how much you struggle, you two were always destined to face each other. Just like all the past you've repaired. Don't get in my way, Papa. I'm going to. Think about it, kiddo. He's your last living family. Is fighting him really your only choice? I... I need to avenge my father. Uh, looks like your mind is made up. This sword... It's the power you need to make your wish come true. Those with souls of light have suffered for long enough. Cast off their cursed chains! Fight by my side!
I don't need anything else. I can be with you. We can't be together. No matter how much we care for each other. The world, that's wrong. Not us. I'm sorry. I do not fail. I ran the calculations countless times. The outcome never changed. If only we've been together. I just wanted her to smile one more time. I just wanted someone to see me for who I truly was. I want someone to smile. And I must lose something in order to make this wish come true. We only realize what we have since it's gone. Only then do we understand just how precious it was. You're doomed to the same fate as us. Give up 
up and die. Damn you. Now, I'll finally get my revenge. I just... I just wanted to live with Mom again. I'm sorry, Mom. I'm so sorry. Always walk a dark path. Alone. Crushed by the weight of reality. The conflict I felt made me hate the entire world. And in the end, all I had was my own voice crying out. But there was always a faint light in my life. And that light was what kept me going. That's how I know. There has to be another, another way. way. Looks like we're never going back to our world, huh? I guess we're supposed to stay in the cage. A fitting place for wicked people who committed grave sins. God, you're such a nerd. Oh, lay off. Oh. Goodness, I 
think I may have uh, dropped my purse somewhere. Well, well, uh, why don't you two go on ahead? Hmm? All right. Oh. Even so, someone's gonna need to look after those kids. And, and that's, that's our, our job. job.